Welcome everyone and, and uh, welcome to today's installment in the adventures of building, owning and operating your helicycle. Today we're going to be focused on the process and uh, tips and tricks for balancing your tail rotor. Uh, the tail rotor on this ship was uh, off uh, for transport to Oshkosh and back and so since it's been a while since we balanced it we're going to go ahead and do that uh, today. Uh, we'll start by showing you some of the important uh, elements of the balancing, the setup for your balancing equipment, and then uh, actually go through the balance itself and the results. We use a Dynavibe um, uh, track and balance system, and that works well not only for the tail rotor, but also for the main rotors. And um, for the tail rotor, though, we're going to balance this just like it were a two-bladed propeller. And so we'll go through that same uh, process using the auto balance feature on the um, Dynavibe, and we'll hopefully get through this pretty quickly. Stand by while we uh, set up and to show you some of the important elements. Okay, first let's get started with some of the uh, important elements. Uh, the places and the location that you'll attach uh, balancing weights are here or here on the pitch horns or alternatively uh, on the back side of the tail rotor um, spar attachment here or here. Now in your setup this creates a little bit of a, a problem because the distance uh, between these two points is about uh, five inches while this distance is more like uh, ten and a half. So we'll have to choose which of these two points we're most likely to have to add weights and we'll go from there. And those weights will be determined by the axis that it is out of balance. Uh, for this purpose we're going to go ahead and just start with the uh, with these two balance points so we'll set our diameter in the uh, in the uh, setup for the balancing at five inches. Uh, and that's in the equivalent of the spinner diameter uh, if you were to be um, balancing a propeller. For the setup, for the setup, we have our uh, optical tack attached to the airframe right here. And on the back of the rotor blade, we also have a corresponding piece of reflective tape. And our accelerometer is here, uh, placed 90 degrees to the axis of the tail rotor gearbox. All we did was uh, clip the safety wire, remove the bolt, add the bracket, and then uh, tighten it back up. When we're all finished, of course, we'll uh, remove that and reinstall the safety wire. That's basically the setup. Uh, we have the wiring moving forward to the um, uh, rest of the airframe up toward the cabin and uh, where we'll connect our equipment and then perform our run up. Here you can see that we have uh, uh, taped our uh, cables to the airframe uh, so that they're not in any danger of, of getting entangled with anything. But you'll also note that we don't have the main blades on. Uh, that will make uh, balancing the tail rotor so much easier because we won't have to uh, uh, worry about uh, 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 the main blade since we do have to spin this up at 100% RPM. And um, that will allow us to, to uh, actually do this from outside the cabin uh, instead of having to be inside. We've concluded our tail rotor balancing exercise and we're very happy with the result. Um, in the end, we um, ended up with uh, four runs 
uh, a baseline run with no weights uh, on the tail rotor. Uh, that gave us a, um, uh, a baseline setting where we knew to, where we were starting from, and then um, three additional runs past that as we slowly walked in the um, balance point on the tail rotor. Uh, when we were finished, we ended up with a balance point of 0 0.07 IPS at uh, 327 degrees, and that is a very good uh, point uh, from a balanced perspective. We ended up with uh, a very small amount of weight in two locations on the tail rotor. Uh, one standard um, thickness uh, 3AN washer under this bolt, and then under the pitch horn bolt, we ended up with one extra standard and one extra thin washer um, to, uh, to bring that into balance. Uh, we ran it again after all the balance weights were applied and the safety wire reinstalled and, um, and ended up at that .07 mark. Uh, we'll share with you um, in some still photos the polar charts and how that uh, progressed and you can uh, see how we slowly walk that in um, to, to our balance point. Um, that concludes our tail rotor balancing exercise. Uh, we'll be doing the main rotors next uh, and stand by for that installment. So, all done now. Just a couple of notes of some importance as you begin the process of balancing your tail rotor. First, the master or number one blade is the blade that you will install the reflective tape on. It doesn't matter which blade you choose, but just recognize that the reflective tape is used by the optical tack to measure not only the RPM, but the relative position of the balance point to the number one blade. Next, the reflective tape that will be used in the process. Weigh it. Then add a piece of masking tape on the opposite blade in the same position, the same weight as the reflective tape. It doesn't seem like much, but the reflective tape will have a measurable impact on the balance point when you renew, remove it. So we need to eliminate that situation up front. Finally, safety wire. When you remove it to add weight to a pitch length bolt, reinstall it before making your test run. Again, not a lot of weight, but it will have a measurable impact on the results. So how did we do? Let's take a look. The first test run we made was to establish the initial balance status after having removed all the existing weights that were used previously. The result of this test run was an out of balance condition that measured 0.8 IPS or inches per second located at 115 degrees. Based on those results, we need to make an adjustment adding 0.9 grams of weight to the master or number one blade as indicated on the polar chart. After applying the weight to the number one blade, a new test run shows a significant improvement in the out of balance condition. We can see that here in the displayed polar chart. The new measurement is 0.32 IPS located at 197 degrees. This is a reduction in the out of balance condition by more than half. A really good start, but we're still a ways away from our goal of under 0.1 IPS. Based on these results, we need to make an additional correction. So we will keep the weight added to the number one blade in place, but we'll also add 1.1 grams to the number four bolt, which is a pitch link bolt. Once the weight is added, we will reinstall the safety wire and we're gonna give her another go. Well, that didn't work out so well and definitely not as planned. We made an error and added weight to the number four bolt 
when we should have added the weight to the number two bolt, which is the opposite side pitch link bolt. This resulted in a worsening condition, moving the out of balance point to 0.8 IPS, located now at 215 degrees. Based on this result, we removed the weight from the number four bolt and added 1.6 grams of weight to the number two bolt. As before, the weight on the number one blade was retained in place. After reinstalling all the safety wire, we'll give it another try and see how that works out. Aha, success at last. The spinal correction resulted in a balanced condition of 0.07 IPS located at 327 degrees. We're going to call that good and wrap up the tail rotor balance exercise. Before we go, a couple of important points. Note that the balance point basically moved along the axis shown on the chart as we added or moved weight, and not just straight up and down left and right. Also, the weights that we selected to make the adjustments were based on the approximate correction that was shown on the polar chart. However, the actual weight was the result of a single or combination of standard and thin washers. We just tried to get close to the re recommended weight. It is possible to dial this in even closer by modifying washers or fabricating specific weights based on the results, but it becomes a law of diminishing returns very quickly once you are below 0.1 IPS and even more so below 0.07 where we ended. In the next exciting installment of Hercules, Balancing the World, we're going to focus on the main rotor system. For that, we will need to call on the spirits because it's truly witchcraft and sorcery, or at least that's the way it seems at times. See you then.